would like to welcome you on BeMoreNews.com and News Before the News, where we uncover the truth. How you doing, sir? Doing oh, well, sir. Good, good. What's your name? Kaylin Young. Kaylin Young. That's indeed. You running for something? No, no. That's the next delegate right there. Future delegate. Who is it? What's your name, sir? Oh, I'm Ty. I work for our I'm Ty. Ty will die. And you said he is the next delegate? Yeah, he's going to be a delegate one day. He's going to be a senator. One of the movers and shakers in uh, Baltimore one day. This guy, this might be the mayor. Sounds like your campaign manager. You, you have the state of Maryland pin on that. That doesn't symbolize you running for well, office? Well, I work for Delegate Sherwood. Sherwood sure, Glenn. Okay, okay. So what happened tonight? What happened today? Here at the meeting. Here at uh, oh, today, um, Best yeah, Democratic Club. Strong, strong meeting. Um, all the young movers and shakers in here. Um, Everybody, it's really good to see so many young people coming together. And when we say young, let's qualify that. Is that 25, 35? Young at heart. No, seriously. Well, when I say young, but when it comes to age, I would, I would say under 35. Okay. Um, but and it's, I mean, hey, we welcome the, the fresh energy. Absolutely. And, and it's necessary. I really think it's a great, uh, it's a great form for young people to, um, to be able to have a voice, express themselves. Um, make sure that our elected officials are held accountable as they need to be. Do people know how to do that? No. What, no. what should people do? If you want to really hold your elected official accountable, uh, excuse me, your elected official accountable, you need to show up in their office. You need to set a meeting. The only way in W. Glenn's office that you're really going to be effective, you can call me and I'll hear you'll be wanting a number. You can send me an email and I'll check you. But if you show your face and you come in the office, then, then you'll be able to really affect this. And then I'll hear what you have to say. Okay. Good stuff. Thank you very much, sir. Keep watching BeMoreNews.com and News Before the News, where we uncover the truth. Can't let you go, Councilman. We just trying to say hello to What's you. What's up, Brother Donnie? How you doing today? Good, good. How are you, Baltimore City Councilman? Nick Mosby, Best Democratic Club. Tell me about the event tonight. I'm blessed. Oh, it was a beautiful event. I mean, it's, it's wonderful. Why to was see, it beautiful? To see young folks coming together um, who are politically active, engaged, and understand. And, and what is, is young 25 to 35? Oh, young could be. Young is the spirit of your heart. No, I'm, I'm 47. Am I young? You're young, Donnie. Yeah, you're young. I, I, don't, I said something well, kicked out the how club. How about this? It was a diverse group of individuals from most of them East We folks. need young. Yeah, well, Everybody need talking about the old folks that need to go retire on the beach somewhere. Yeah, we, we need all. But. I mean, what the Best Democratic Club is doing is a great job. I mean, really bringing energy um, and really, um, you know, building for the future for, you know, future of Baltimore. So I, remember, I remember a time when to see, you know, Councilman Scott, to see young people engaged in this 35, 40, that's beautiful, man. It is. It, is. It's, it's, it means that some of us, the work was worth it. Well, the one thing I'll say is it's critically important. I mean, when we talk about, you know, the next stages of our city and, you know, the type of city that we lead to generations that we haven't seen yet, generations yet unborn, it's critically important for us to organize now and understand where we're going to take our city. So that's what I'm excited about. You know, and you have organic organizations like this who are coming together from a grassroots and ground level. You know, it's really about the true spirit of making sure that we have a proud Baltimore, you know, the great American city is great in the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years in our communities. I want to tell you that we're very proud of you, Councilman, as well as Mrs. Mo. That means a lot coming from you, Donnie, so I truly appreciate it. Well, that. when you see couples relatively young compared to me, but, but couples working together and, and she's supporting you, you're supporting her, I think that's really, man, I don't know any legislation around that could push more and more of that. Because that's, that's what we need. Our, our families are broken. Yes, sir. Our communities are broken. Nobody's getting married. Yeah. Shacking. Yeah. The one thing I'll say is this, I'm blessed. You know, she's truly my rock. She's been with me since I told her my dream, day one down in Tuskegee, Alabama. And, you know, we sat in our dorm rooms and just talked about it. And now I'm living my dream, something I always wanted to do since the third grade, so I'm blessed. Can more Baltimore City young men live their dreams? Oh my goodness, it's wide open. Um, it's all about connecting the dots. I mean, we talk about the assets and resources of West Baltimore, specifically in my district. I mean, the history, the culture that we... I mean, a lot of times we talk about some of our communities, we talk about how poor they are. And I look at it a different way. They're rich, we just don't know they're rich. 
rich with history, rich with culture, rich with assets that you know we don't necessarily take advantage of. So it's all about connecting the dots, Donnie, and I'm excited I get the opportunity to attempt to do that for the people of Baltimore, specifically West Baltimore. Without going too heavily into it, what ought we be looking at in the next governor of the state of Maryland? Someone who truly understands that and I'm talking about Baltimore, black folks, That's black Baltimore, because yeah. I get tired of us. Nobody want to say black people no yeah. more. The, like, it's illegal. The, the one thing I will say is that understand and know that Baltimore City is the epicenter of the state. And for the state to, to thrive and for us to continue to, um, you know, see uh, improvement in our school system, see improvement as it relates to medium uh, incomes, we have to uplift Baltimore City. I mean, you're only as weak, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Um, and when you talk about uh, specifically the Baltimore, the health disparities thing, I'm excited about the enterprise zone that the uh, lieutenant governor was able to push. Um, hopefully we'll see more of that in the future. I mean, this year I think it was $4 million or $5 million. Um, but then also, I as guess it relates, that's your candidate. Is no, this, that's not my candidate. That sounds like a subtle plug. No, to me. no, that's just one thing. But then also, when we look is at the attorney general doing anything, we have to look at restructuring. Don't we have to look at restructuring the way we look at juvenile justice system, specifically the young men who are locked up as who are, who are being detained as adults. Um, you know, ensuring that they're still juveniles because you're innocent until proven guilty. So, do we have anybody in Annapolis that understands what legislation? can be written, needs to be written in order to change that, as well as the sentencing disparity. We have a black president, a black attorney general, or U.S. general, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm real hopeful and, and, and I'm hoping that we can use those positions to start changing the laws, the yeah. policy. The one thing I also talk about too is, uh, you know, we talk about gun control and gun reform. I'm glad that we're all at the table, but what does that mean? I mean, in white, in white America, it's yeah. different than what it means it in does. my neighborhood. It does. And so I don't know what they talking about. Well, my what are is, they talking about? My point is right now, the legislation at the table, I'm glad we're sitting at the table and we're talking. But as it relates to Baltimore City and urban centers all across America, the national discussion has to be about the manufacturing process, about the, the ownership process, and about holding owners accountable for their lost handguns and things of that nature. Councilman, I was having a conversation with a, with a white guy who was on social media, and he kept talking about the criminals, the criminals, the yeah. criminals. Yeah. And after digging, he was talking about black people. Yeah. Because when I look at the prison system, four out of ten inmates are black men. Well, come on. So when he keeps saying criminals, criminals, and then I look at Sandy, uh, Newtown, and, and the murders that happen, are they the same situation? Or is it being muddled together? The murders of young black children, yeah. Chicago, Detroit, Baltimore, yeah. and white teen kills 20 people on some mental health flip out. From a legislative perspective, I don't think it's being muddled together at all. I mean, I think that, once again, the legislation and the discussion now really doesn't do anything to change uh, the issues that inner cities like Baltimore, Chicago, Philadelphia, uh, Detroit, uh, D.C. face, you know, on a daily basis, and that's with illegal handguns. And understanding how do we develop a way to manufacture those handguns so I can tie it to the person who legally purchased it or legally retrieved it, however it, run, it winds up in the hands of someone to do an illegal act. Okay, let, let me give you something a little more poignant. Pennsylvania Avenue, they've been selling dope there for years. Yes. Okay, but we got satellites that can peep. Star Wars and all of this, but nobody can catch the dope that keep coming to Pennsylvania Avenue yeah. for the past 40 years. Yeah. And so it says to me, it's bogus. Well, it's, it's a war when, you know, it's a young black child that's the face of illegal drugs, but we know that the drug trail actually leads to at least Wall Street. And I, I can't say that I don't disagree that there are a lot of These black kids ain't got no speedboats and no Lear jets. I totally understand that. I totally agree. I mean, people say the war on drugs, I say it's the war on young African-American men. You can read the book, um, you know, The New Jim Crow. Uh, you know, that's a, a brilliant point to point out how you show the increase of the federal penal system. You know, a seven-fold increase in 40 years, majority of which are tied to drugs and are tied to African-American males. Um, but statistically proven, you know, African-American males are no more than likely to sell or use drugs than their other counterparts. So There's another notion that black people getting all the welfare in the United States. That's not true either. 
where do these notions come from and why do people cast them on the black community as if we don't have enough stuff? Well, I think that's why it's important for political, politically activated groups like this to come together so we can have a true voice. It's also critically important for us to have minority journalism Minority journalists. I'm only a minority in America. <laughs> I, I, worldwide, we're we're in the majority. We are the, the world in Africa. But, 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 WB Du Bois. But, I know it really well. But black media. The, the world in Africa. WB Du Bois. Yeah. I know it really well. But, but the black saying, black media organizations like we this need come this. together. We, we do. need it. It's critically important. We do. Yes, sir. Your final thought. Black History Month. Now we're in the Women's History Month. Baltimore City, Maryland General Assembly, gubernatorial election next year. Your I mean, thoughts. My thoughts is, Nick Mose, I think Baltimore going forward, I, I'm excited, uh, not only for groups like the Best Democratic Club, but for the energy that we have amongst young folks in this city. So, you know, I, I just look for the future. I'm excited. Like I said, I'm blessed. I get the opportunity to do something that I, I want to do my entire life, and I'm going to take advantage of it as long as the citizens of Baltimore allow me to. Mayor Mosby, I'm Councilman Nick Mosby. You take the mayor's spot one day? Whatever the citizens of Baltimore allow me to do, man. I'm just blessed. You've heard it here, folks. Keep watching BeMoreNews.com, the news before the news, where we uncover.